Good morning, and welcome to my first tutorial in iClone 8. In this tutorial, you will learn how to blend a motion capture clip seamlessly with a run cycle on a spline, and then back to the motion capture clip once again. At the end, I will also include some small tips how you can modify the run cycle to make it look uh, slightly more believable, and make sure that we get rid of any foot sliding issues that we might encounter uh, with the spline. I do realize that I jump between softwares a bit, so make sure that you let me know which software you want me to cover more in my tutorials, and I will try to focus my efforts on those softwares. So here we are in iClone, and I'm using this character uh, called Amber from the La Familia pack. I have these two motion capture clips that were captured using a motion capture suit. So these are organic movements captured by a motion capture artist. She runs around a corner like this. Then we have a second clip where she's already running from the start and she runs up, pauses and then changes direction. And we want to combine these two using a run cycle that we can modify and tweak to our liking. And instead of stringing a bunch of uh, run cycles together, we can achieve this same thing uh, by attaching a run cycle to a spline and then releasing the run cycle as she's uh, approaching the end of the uh, spline. For, uh, for this, we need a run cycle for the character. And if you don't have a run cycle, uh, unfortunately, I don't have to, time to show you how to create this run cycle in this tutorial. But please let me know if you want a separate tutorial for creating run cycles in iClone. And I will be more than happy to make one. I'm going to start by first positioning the first clip. And I believe it's already perfect as it is. It starts from the center of the scene. We can see that by hitting Ctrl A to get up the world axis uh, origin. We won't do anything with this second one just yet, so we'll move this to the right, so it's not in the way. So, as you, as you can see in uh, my cycle here, she uh, starts the cycle with her, uh, let me see, uh, right foot on the uh, planted on the ground. So in the first uh, motion clip here, we're going to find a suitable point where she's uh, just about to plant her right foot. So I think this one will be perfect. In order to blend these two clips nicely together, we don't actually want to break the clip, which otherwise probably would make sense. Instead, we want to go a few frames forward and we'll break the clip here because we don't need the extra keyframes after this. So we're going to remove this and then we're going to select the uh, Resize Clip tool, a very handy tool that lets you trim the ending of clips and still keep the uh, original keyframes. And we'll trim this down. Her right foot is firmly planted on the ground. So here it's firmly planted. So we'll trim this down here. Next up, we're going to add our uh, run loop or uh, run cycle. As you can see, the uh, run loop is way over here. Select this run loop and then go into the motion direction control tool. And make sure that you are uh, selected on the uh, correct clip. Otherwise, you're probably going to wonder why stuff doesn't work. Select the previous clip and then change to the right toe because that's what's planted on the ground here. And now she will snap all the way over to the uh, first clip. So you can see her foot here is firmly planted. If you noticed, we do have like a snapping, which we don't want. And that's why we kept the original keyframes. So using the resize clip tool, we're going to drag out the ending. And if you remember, we are keeping the original keyframes. So we can simply blend this just like so. And she will blend over to the uh, run loop. Now it does look a bit off to me, probably because she runs in a different direction. So you can see that yes, indeed, she's like snapping to to the right. So we're going to tweak the rotation of this one just slightly and then realign the uh, position. So now we have the first clip 
seamlessly blending into the run loop, we're going to add another run loop. So on this second one here, we're actually going to uh, right click and split this. This is just because I have an expression clip attached. On this, we're going to reset the pivot, which will make sure that she's running in place instead. So we have motion capture running over to the run loop, transitioning to the uh, stationary uh, run cycle. Next up, we're going to create the spline that she's running on. So this will be our path. Uh, you can draw this spline however you want. So we'll go up to create up here, then go down to path. Something like this, perhaps. And then she's running around. And then she comes back. Mm, something like this. This isn't a very natural uh, looking bend on the curve. We'll fix that by going into the edit point and we'll just uh, fix these spline points so it looks a bit more smooth, like so. So now we want her to run on this spline. And perhaps you've already noted that you can attach a character to a spline. However, when you do that, you will notice that the character like snaps to the path. And that can very easily uh, create a very ugly seam between uh, the different motion clips. So instead of doing that, I'm going to undo we're going to position the spline point as closely as we can to her root origin. So I'll go into the spline and then locate the edit point. Make sure that it's directly beneath her hip. And then also be very cautious and make sure that it's completely straight. The more accurately you uh, place this first uh, point, aligning it where, with her uh, position and rotation, the better uh, end result you'll get. We also need something to move along the path if we're not going to move uh, the character. So let's go up to create and let's create a simple sphere. What I like to do, I like to uh, lock the scale and then change the uh, scale to something like 10 to make it a bit smaller. And then also if I have multiple characters, I like to color code the spline and the uh, sphere according to, the, to that character. She has very red pants, so I'm going to change the diffuse to something like red. Then I'm going to attach my little uh, sphere and attach it to the path. So we'll go down in the timeline and find the start position. On this frame, we want to select our character and then select under linkage. Link pick parent, we're going to select the sphere and then we are going to loop our run cycle using the loop tool here. Now we're going to go down to the spline or the path, select follow path and actually you should uh, check this box before you attach her, otherwise you will still have a small snap. So please make sure that you check this before you attach or link the character to the ball. So I'm going to create a keyframe by dragging this slider back and forth. Now I'm going to go forward in time and simply guess an appropriate uh, distance. When you do this, you will get a Bezier curve on the transform, which is something that we don't want. You can see that if we go over here, starting off slowly and then she's accelerating and we don't want that. We want a linear curve for this one. So select the constraint. And we'll go into the curve editor here, select the start and ending point, and simply change these two to linear instead. Now we're going to have her running. And that was actually a pretty good guess uh, <laughs> for the first try. Sometimes she's running way too fast, like you will see here. So it doesn't uh, match. A very quick and easy way to see if uh, you have the uh, correct speed is to find a place in time where her foot is planted firmly on the ground, then go keyframe by keyframe. And if the foot is sliding forwards, then the transform is way too fast. If the foot is sliding backwards, the transform is way too slow. So as you can see, her foot is sliding forwards as we go 
forward in time, frame by frame. And that means the timing is way too fast. So we're going to undo and have a look at the first timing that we had. And let's find her once again. It's sliding slightly backwards, but it's not too bad actually. You have to make sure that you uh, re-select the linear curve. So, so now she's running around the curve here. So the next step is to combine this run cycle with the next motion capture clip we have. I'm going to select the ball or the sphere and that one ends here. So I'm actually going to resize this clip slightly. So first I'm going to trim the loop and then changing to the speed clip. I reselect the sphere, go back to the character and then scale until we have a one-to-one -one ending position for both the sphere and for a loop. Next up, I'm going to add another run loop from the library. However, something that you won't notice is that she's still attached to the sphere here. So we're going to make sure that we go to the end of the spline uh, transform. Our character selected, locate the uh, linkage, and then make sure that we unlink this. Keep in mind that we haven't actually moved the transform on our character. You can see that her uh, transform values are still at 0, 0, 0, 0 for everything here. So she has her right foot planted on the ground here, and I'm going to find a, a similar point in the motion capture clip. You can see her right foot is planted on the ground here. We'll break this, go up to our motion direction control once again, and align this with the previous clip, the right toe, the translate and rotate. Since this isn't a loop, these two won't blend. In order to prevent this, I'm going to go a few frames forward, then using the uh, loop tool, I'm going to extend the loop into this clip a few frames, and that's pretty much it. So if we go back and have a look at what we've created, so running, then she transitions to the spline, following the path of the uh, sphere. The sphere follows the spline, and then she disconnects from the spline and keeps on running. Now I won't really go into detail here, but what you can do after this step is complete is that you can uh, bake everything down. So go up to animation and then flatten all motion with constraints. This will flatten and basically uh, destroy all layers that you have here. So this is a what we are calling a destructive step. So make sure that you're uh, satisfied with what you have since you won't really be able to modify the spline anymore. If we zoom in here to our character so, so we have a bit of a foot, foot sliding issue here. That's a very easy fix using the motion correction uh, tool. We're also going to make sure that we uncheck the feet. So we just want the toes. Yeah, so you can tweak this to your uh, liking, but uh, as you can see, using the uh, motion correction uh, tool, we can make sure that the uh, character's feet are planted firmly on the ground. Like I said, I won't really go into detail here. Uh, I'll leave a very more comprehensive uh, detailed tutorial on this topic down below. So when someone runs and turns, it's very rare that the person is actually uh, standing uh, upwards. You usually do bend a little to avoid falling over. So when she's Approaching the curve here, we'll go into our motion layer, selecting the hip, hitting reset, that will create a keyframe for everything here. We can go into our motion layer to see that indeed it did create a keyframe on, uh, on all channels. And then when she starts running in the circle, we're going to select her hip once again, and then bend it. And we can also 
move the hip slightly. When she comes out of the curve, we're going to copy our keyframes over here. Paste, move forwards in time, and then hitting reset once again. And she's back to her normal pose. And here you can see the final result of what we've done today. So we have our character running from a motion capture clip. It then transitions seamlessly to a spline where she's following a sphere. We have corrected the feet and then added a slight uh, bend or angle to her uh, waist. And then it seamlessly transitions back to the motion capture. So I do hope that you found this tutorial helpful and as always, let me know if I skipped any important steps that you might be wondering about. And in that case, leave a comment down below in the comments. Until next time, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.